On this entry of Binder Breakdown, we're going to be going through my main binder for Magic the Gathering. So as the intro said, this is my main binder for Magic the Gathering. The binder itself is nothing special. It does zip, which was very important when making my decision. Some of these cards are a little bit old. Nothing too rare, but still nothing I wanted to lose. In the front pouch here, there isn't really anything too special. Just random promo things that came with previous purchases. The coolest thing would probably be the Shadow More booklet. Again, nothing crazy or else I would show it off, but it's just random inserts from over the years. So we do start off each section with some art cards, kind of how I divide out my different sections, which I do have them section out by color because primarily Magic the Gathering is something I play more than I collect. And that's just the most efficient way for me to be able to build decks back in the day. And then our first section here is the black cards, which you'll probably be able to tell that back in the day I very much went after any vampire card I could find. It used to be quite a challenge to make a deck around vampires, but I somewhat made it work. And just as a little FYI, I started playing back in 2003. 7th uh, edition was my first purchase. I got the Thorn Elemental starter deck. Good times, good times. Even though my very first match, I got cheated, but you know. So I do have it set up with rares first from each color and then holographic cards. Up next is the green section, which you're gonna definitely see a lot of elves. That was my primary focus uh, when I first started was just making a crazy elf deck, which I do still have. Um, I have a little box of my favorite five decks that all of them I actively worked on improving over like a decade's worth of time. Um, I haven't touched them in quite a while other than just to look through them, but could never get rid of them. Back in the day when I was in card club, uh, that elf deck was pretty feared though. That was high school, so ancient times now. Up next, we have our white section. No particular theme here, it was just whatever I happened to get from booster packs. Never was too big into it. Um, a guy I used to do double battles with, he had a white artifact deck. So I let him handle white and I handled green and there wasn't too much we couldn't take on. And although I started in 7th edition, there is some random cards that are older than that. But again, nothing too crazy. Up next is everyone's favorite, blue cards. I faced so many blue decks that I hated back in the day that I definitely never focused on blue. Uh, now that I've been playing Arena, I do have to say I have a few counter decks just for when I get frustrated. And they are good for blowing off some nerd steam. Last of the monotype is red. Again, no real theme, just random cards. A lot of ping cards probably, things to take off little bits of damage. And of course, there's always lots of goblins just cause that's the nature of red cards.
Up next after this is our multicolor cards. And th again, this is just all the rares that I don't have in decks. I think I probably have about 10 decks that are fully constructed, no proxies or anything like that. So this isn't quite everything, but this is everything that's not currently spoken for, I should say. If anyone's interested in seeing any of those decks that I've been working on, I'm happy to show them off. That might be more of a short kind of thing. I don't know. But make sure to let me know if you're interested in any more of the Magic Collection. Although I've been playing since 2003, I definitely didn't hold on to my whole collection since then. From high school and everything, uh, <laughs> we used to trade cards for food and things like that. Just extra like video games, stuff like that. And then randomly losing sections of my collection. And I would even have random times that I would just like <laughs> get fed up and give away a large bulk of the collection. But I try to hold on to most of the rares. And then of course my favorite decks, never on the chopping block. Up next we have artifacts, always useful regardless of the type of deck. Up next is not a large section, but still a section nonetheless, and that's the rare and holographic lands. And this little section right here is where I accidentally bought a Japanese Magic the Gathering pack. It had a little bundle at Walmart for, I believe it was Strixhaven. It was a set that was fairly new and very hard to find. They advertised the pack on the front cover, but nowhere on the box did it mention that it was a Japanese pack until you opened it up. So that was fun, cool to look at, but not really anything else I can do with it. I know that one right there is a Drist art card, and that's probably one of my favorite art cards I've gotten so far. Then we have just some random cards, tokens, things like that. And then I have a decent amount of the Magic the Gathering comics, uh, but this is one that I never opened. And I'm glad I didn't because they used to come with cards in them, and I thought that was the coolest thing. That was the main reason I started buying the comics. So that one is still factory sealed with the original card inside of it. But that's the core of the Magic Collection. Appreciate everyone that stayed around this long. I hope everyone is staying safe and warm out there. And until next time, have a great one.